Alright, hello, this is Second Quest, and today we're playing Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy was released in November of 2003 on PlayStation, GameCube, and Xbox, and later released on the PC in 2017 under THQ Nordic, when Nordic Games bought out THQ, and then later on in 2019 was released on Nintendo Switch. I will be playing on Nintendo Switch, providing some commentary. So in this opening scene, character called Emotep right there is talking to Sphinx and Horus. We will be controlling Sphinx through this game. He's asking us to take a highly dangerous mission to retrieve the Blade of Osiris and to return it home. So basically, he's asking us if we are too afraid to go, we can step down if we wish, we say no, we're not afraid, let's do this. So once we return the Blade of Osiris, we transport home and the game is over. Should be a short game. If nothing goes wrong, of course. Alright, so we're in the Uruk area. That is the castle of Uruk. The, uh, that big castle over there with the big ray coming up the center. Emotep is a little concerned about the ray. I wonder why. Looks a little ominous. He's a little confused about what could be happening over there. He doesn't have a good feeling about it. This is one of my favorite games growing up. I didn't grow up with a lot of Zelda. Um, I did grow up with the uh, original NES Legend of Zelda, uh, but the 3D Zeldas I didn't really play uh, until after I played this. So I kind of grew up with this, and um, this is very much like an Egyptian Legend of Zelda. Uh, so if you like Zelda, you would like this. But this has a very special place in my heart. Alright, Horus, he's like, you look, uh, you look over here, I'm gonna go over here and look around. So Horus leaves us to our own devices, and at that point we take control of Sphinx. Alright, now that we have control of Sphinx, we're gonna head over this way to the rock that's on this ledge. We're going to be collecting, of all things, coconuts. So you want to pick up this rock and head to a tree. Three of the four trees have coconuts. We need three coconuts. One coconut there. Go back to the rock and hit this other tree. When you hit this other tree, watch out for the cobra. Watch out! Alright, now we go up here. We're going to see an inactive geyser. What we need to do is find a way to activate it so that the lava will shoot up so that we can go up. All right, we can ignore this tree over here as there is no coconut in this tree. Cutscene. Horus, how'd you get so high? All right, come over here. I need to show you something. Okay, we cannot jump that high yet. We're going to need something. If you hold the B button for a long period of time, you get to do a long jump, as you can see here. Cutscene. Horus, how did you get so high? As you can see, there's a rock there, and there's a tree uh, to the side of us, which has the third and final coconut that we'll be needing. Ah, a lava monster. Perhaps he's hungry for some coconuts. Let's pick up this rock and hit this tree. Boom coconut. Alright, so we're going to travel over to the lava monster and see if he wants some coconuts. Hop along here. Uh, these flower plants over here, if you get close to them, they will explode. So be careful for that. But as long as you run by them, you shouldn't uh, have an issue at all. So we're going to step... Whoa! Too scrawny. Good. We're too scrawny. I'm starving, but I'm not desperate enough to eat the likes of you. Too many clothes. So, are we too scrawny, or do we have too many clothes? Okay, it seems like he wants some coconuts. We have coconuts. Hey, you with the face paint. What's that smell? Coconuts. Can I have some? Sure. Okay, thank you. Feels so much better. Step onto the tongue. Reach where you want to go. All right, so we're going to get into this monster's mouth again. And he's basically going to let us choose a horizontal and vertical area for him to spit us out. Watch out for the lava? I don't know. It's pretty hard to mess this up. You almost have to try to miss your target here. But we're up here, and here's Horus. 
there is a rock next to Horus. You can actually hit Horus with the rock, which is an achievement in the um, original release of the game. I'm not going to do that here, though. Alright, so if you pick up the rock, you can hit the big flower plant and uh, kind of get rid of all of them at once. It's a little hard not to take a little damage here, but I got lucky there. Horus, I don't know why I didn't think of that solution before. You were probably just lucky, or rather I knew, and I was just toying with you. Thanks. Okay, I guess we see what kind of character Horus is. Alright, so if you step into here, you get a force field of sorts, which will allow you to walk on lava. So we're going to do just that. We're going to jump off of here and walk all the way in the back of this lava area. And you can see just ahead is a stone statue. I'm going to pull it and maybe that will release some lava. Perhaps that will activate the geysers. I knew it! Alright, with the force field that we currently have on, we do have enough time to get up all three geysers without getting, um, without stepping into that area again for a new force field, so that's good, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna jump and we're just gonna miss it, that's okay. We have time. One. Two. And three. Alright. These eye guards, whenever they see you, a gate will show up, and the gate won't come down unless they don't see you. Uh, and the only way to get through is, you know, to get through where they don't see you. This, these guys come up a lot, especially in the mummy scenes later on in the game. So this is good practice for that. Don't let them see you. Alright, perfect. Alright, we're getting in. Rock, you can also throw a rock at those eye guards, and... Skaboom. Alright. Run past the flowers. And here we are. Horus, how'd you get so high? Alright, look if you throw a rock at that animal warren over there, perhaps. Okay. So we're gonna do just that. We're gonna throw a rock at that animal warren. Animal warren. Alright, here is the first monster of the... Well, not the first monster. I guess we saw the lava monster and the cobra. This is a slim burble. Slim burbles are very useful uh, throughout the whole game. Eventually, we'll be able to capture monsters. We'll be able to re-release monsters, such as the slim burble, to break brittle areas or to explode some ropes. When they get mad, they charge at you and explode when they touch something. So boom, one. And they kind of spit out like this larva type of, type of thing, and a new Slim Burble appears. So they kind of respawn themselves. There's two. I, I definitely like this part. Uh, the rock rolls when the ropes are gone, and it creates a platform for us to get across this area, which we couldn't get across before unless we used a jump glitch, which I do not use glitches. I have nothing against glitches. I love watching them, and um, but that's just not how I play. I like to play as the game was intended to be played. This is a save statue. They're going to be all over the game. And save your progress. We're not going to save here. Hello, Horus. I feel the only thing that Horus has uh, against us is that he could jump higher. Watch out for the spiders. Alright, we're going to come on up this ledge. If you get hit by the spider, it just takes damage. Um, you don't necessarily fall off. And perfect. Go along this way. Watch out for the eye. Alright, these eye things are pretty cool. I think it's the only area in the game where the eyes show up, though. Alright, and now we gotta go across to watch out for the laser eyes. Basically, Horus being one step ahead is the game's way of teaching us how to use certain controls. I think it's quite creative. 
Watch out for the eyes. The eye. All right. Now we're in there. Oh, one more. All right, and I think that's it for the game. I think there are no more of those eyes. All right, we're in the area where the blade is. We just have to go up this rope, and we'll be on the platform. I bet you Horus is already there. There he is. At last I found it. Horus, we found it. All right, the ancient blade of Osiris. Look, it's over there on that rock pinnacle, but how can we reach it? All right, if you go this way, this way, there's another stone statue and you can pull it to release some lava, which will blow up some platforms. And there they are. Thank you very much, Sphinx. You've been more than helpful. Okay. He's gonna get a little antsy, a little impatient. And the ray. The ray is like not so fast. Lucky, oh no, where's this thing going? The lava. The lava fall. That's what happens, Horus. Alright. See you later. Alright, now we need to find a way to get by now that that bridge is broken. Um, if you take a left right here, all the way down, you can see a zip line. Extremely, extremely convenient. But we'll take it. Alright, and here are those platforms, you want to jump on those, and they go up and down, so basically when they line up, uh, just jump from one to the other. Really basic stuff. And there we go. Jump over here, jump up, and here is the blade. Emotep always appears telepathically to tell us how we're doing on our journey. I really like the Blade of Osiris. It's a really cool weapon. Later on you get a somersault jump and a slam attack. Really cool. I like the look of it too. So basically we need to go to that chest to get a portal amulet that Emotep has kept there and that will transport us home and then the game will be done. All right, so basically, if there's ever a statue that looks like this, you want to slam it with your sword, and it'll break and usually open up an area. Here's another one of the um, force field areas, and that'll this lasts a lot shorter. As you can see, it's already, already blinking. When it blinks faster and faster, that's how you know that the force field is wearing off. But it's just enough time for us to get across the lava and up this rope where we were before, and we're going to go right into this cave this time. And the eye guards can actually be hit by the sword. So, boom! Make your way this way. I'm going to collect a couple of scarabs. Scarabs are the form of currency in this game, as opposed to rupees or gold. You kind of need a lot of it in this game as well. Alright, so you know when a battle is going to happen, when the gates go up and uh, you have no way out. We have three spike spiders behind us, but first we're going to grab this mysterious amulet. We don't know where that transports us, but it's good to have. If you jump here, you can miss them. They, they won't hurt you. And that one got away. And found a way to hurt me anyway, but that's okay. Damage happens. All right, done. All right, go this way. If you see a hanging lantern, you can strike it. Usually scarabs will fall out of it. There's also different kind of scarabs called onyx scarabs that could be only found in Uruk, so you'll only get those as the mummy, but they can be used at a certain store later on in the game. 
Um, this is a Eye of Ra post. Uh, if you go in front of it, it will hurt you. It will strike you down. So we need the Slim Burble to break it. As you can see the cracks on it, it is brittle. A, a Slim Burble or two or three. There's like three of them now. It took a while to get there, and I took damage. But you, damage happens. Watch out for the fire plant. Here we go. And perfect. A skeletal spider. There's one a little later, but after that, you don't see those till much later in the game. Okay, a mummy worm. You want to dodge. Boom, boom. Done. You want to make this jump. You can hit this guy just because. Nice. Alright, so if you if you kill a monster, there is a chance that it'll leave behind an ankh, uh, and that will replenish your health. Your health is not in hearts, it is in anks. You can get gold ankh pieces as opposed to heart pieces, like in Zelda. Scarab. Alright, so you want to do a couple of platform jumps, and you want to watch out for these fireballs. I got lucky there. But that can very easily knock you down. Alright. One more scarab. We got five scarabs. We're doing good. Alright, this is kind of a rudimentary puzzle. Very easy. Um, you basically just hit each one with your sword. It's basically just getting us ready, familiarizing us with the puzzles to yet to come in the game that are a little more complex. So you want to hit all of these and a platform will appear in the middle. And there it is. All right, so you wanna jump on the platform and head up. There's another one of those brittle statues that you can hit with your blade, boom. Cool uh, little bridge. And there it is, there's the amulet. So we, we got it, we made it, game done. But the ray, the ray is like, not so fast. All right, so we are alive, but we are clearly trapped. And if we want to live, we're gonna need to uh, find a way out. We don't have the amulet that Emotep wanted us to get, but we do have the mysterious amulet. And it just so happens we're in a room with a portal god, so that, you know, that just works out. I have no idea where it'll take you, but it seems you have no choice. Step on the magic circle in front of the portal god. We will do that. All right, after you talk to Emotep, you want to go and offer the amulet to the portal god, and he will transport you to a mysterious location. <laughs>